Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, nearly one in five adults in the United States lives with a mental illness and a staggering percentage are not receiving treatment. Our next guests know firsthand the impact this has on a family and here to share their story, we welcome the mother-daughter co-authors of An Impossible Life, Sonia Waston and Rachel Sidoway. Good to have you both with us. And we want to mention you. that Belle, your support dog is mm -hmm. with you, so I love that. This is a really powerful book. You talk about let's just get right into it you talk about being forced to into a men mental institution yes. and the, and the havoc it it just wreaked on your family mm -hmm. so tell me about first of all what led you to what what happened well um i i hid because of the stigma and judgment of mental illness, of mental illness because mm -hmm. the stigma and judgment around mental illness i hid my mental illness for over 20 years and it wasn't. And you hid it from your husband and your kids. No, my of course, my your husband. Your husband saw it. Oh, of course. I mean, when you're living behind closed doors, I right. mean, I appear to be living the ideal life, married to the hospital CEO, beautiful kids, attending charity events, beautiful home. But behind closed doors, my life was falling apart. My marriage was hanging on by a thread. But in this book, An Impossible Life, I shatter that ideal appearance and I share everything. And I've got to ask you, Rachel, what was it like? Your mom asked you to write the book for her. Mm -hmm. What was it like talking to your mom about these really intimate details that maybe you didn't know about? It was really inspiring for me and I think cathartic. Because at 16, I found my mom's suicide note and I was so upset at her. I thought it was selfish. Yeah. I and knew. after writing the book with her and getting the time to hear her thoughts behind these moments in our life, I realized she didn't want to leave me or my family. She just wanted to leave all this pain she was in. Right. So why were you feeling the need to kill yourself? Well, I think a lot of people who struggle with suicidal thoughts and urges is because you're in so much pain and so much suffering, you feel like you can't take it another moment. Right. And I feel like it's a conversation that a lot of people have difficulty having and we need to talk about it more. Just like someone who has cancer and they're fighting for their life, people with suicidal thoughts and urges, it's an illness and they need to fight for their life and have courage and be told they're brave. You were, tell me about your childhood. You were raised by a very kind of big personality father, mm -hmm. right? And kind of a strict mom, too. Yes. Well, mental illness runs in my family. My father died from suicide. My nieces, I have some nephews, I have cousins, um, my grandfather. Mental illness runs through our family. And so when I was young and I saw my father distributing some attributes of the illness, I just thought, oh, you know, this is just my dad. It was my normal. And there wasn't a lot being talked about or being done about mental illness back then as much as it is today. So you started the book but with, the, with the idea, not the idea, but you started the book where you're t you've been taken to a hospital and your husband is there. And the nurse asks you if you are thinking of killing yourself. And you say, yes, you've been thinking of killing it because you've been stressed out. There was a move. There are the kids, there's mm -hmm. all of that. And then the next thing you know, they're taking you away. You felt completely betrayed. Your husband wasn't helping you. Well, I think because of the stigma in, around mental health, I didn't want to accept I had a mental illness. Right. I, I didn't want, I thought at that time, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't want to be crazy, right? right. Everyone says the mentally ill are crazy. I didn't want to be associated with that. I fought it, I didn't want to accept it. But it was after my attempted suicide and I was taken to the hospital where my husband was CEO and a leading psychiatrist there told him, never bring her back here again. Take her to somewhere where people don't know you. And I realized at that point, wait a second, if I had suffered a heart attack, would the doctor tell my husband to never bring me back to this hospital right. again? Right. And that was the turning point for me where I'm like, I'm coming out of hiding. I'm not going to hide from this. I'm going to accept this. I'm going to get the help I desperately need. And I share my story. What were the signs of mental illness for you? Why did you realize that you had a mental illness? What was happening? Well, um, a lot of my behavior was extreme, but also relatable, like overeating, overspending. I weighed almost 300 pounds. I spent $150,000 in credit cards in three months. I feel like, because my daughter wrote the book like a movie, that people will read it in 24 hours, don't want to put it down, want to see how it ends. 
and they feel like after they see all that I have gone through and overcome that they can see, oh, I see her logic behind her thoughts and her feelings and they understand mental illness better and they feel like they can handle their life. When did you uh, see the first signs of mental illness? You were over, um, maybe overly emotional, like going to movies and you talked about going to see a movie and it just was too much for you. Mm -hmm. I would say probably when I was in, if I trace back, probably when I was in college, some of the uh, emotions were so strong and just crying and having meltdowns right. and not being able to get out of bed, not being able to do life. I, you know, there's, you need to function, you need to shower, get out of bed, go to your classes. And in college, I would go weeks where I couldn't get out of bed. I wasn't showering. I couldn't get in, go to class. Right. And I didn't know what was happening to me. It wasn't something that, that was talked about. And that's why I'm talking about it now, and people are talking about it more, but the conversation still needs to continue. Rachel, I, I feel for you, having mm -hmm. been raised with a mom who ended up in a mental institution a couple times and also tried to kill herself a number of times. What was it that you experienced with your mom and her mental illness? I would say when you're a kid, all you know is your home. So to me, it was my normal. Right. But as I get older, I look back and go, oh, wow, there were some things that were very unusual. And now I'm married. And my husband tells me, like, your childhood was very different than mine. Right. For example, when I was growing up, my mom would frequently get banned from places like the Michael's Craft Store or she got... Not Michael's. Yes. <laughs> the Michael's Craft Store, yeah. <laughs> Or, I don't know, like my brother's high school, the, the principal or teachers would tell her you're not allowed on the school property. And I just thought, oh, my mom's just kind of intense. What, was it because you, th you were angry? You were, what happened at each of these places? Well. In general. Well, at Michael, so like I said, extreme behavior. At Michael's, I became obsessive about getting pictures framed. <laughs> and I, as, as silly as it sounds, I had these pictures I needed framed. So I showed up and I'd be there all day talking about mats and, and frames and asking oh, wow. customers, is this pretty or is that pretty? I and was there with her and it was so embarrassing. I would walk away because she would take all the employees' times and there's lines oh, of people needing wow. help, but she, in her mind, was the most important, most important customer there because she needed her pictures framed. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would walk away and she'd be screaming through the store like, Rachel, come back, we need to figure this out. And then they said, ma'am, you're never allowed to come back to my wow. craft store. Mm -hmm. How are you now? How's the family now? Uh, we are intact. I have a 27-year marriage. My children Mitch is I, still with you. you my mm -hmm. husband's still with me. We have a happy marriage. My children are in college or graduated from college. We're best friends. We're best <laughs> friends. That's so great. Yes, I have a beautiful life now. Through medicine and therapy, you can carve out a life for yourself. Yes, I have symptoms. Yes, I have things that I have to deal with. I have a uh, lifelong illness like many people who have yeah. a lifelong illness. But I would say many who suffer from mental illness or those who love them feel helpless and hopeless and there is hope yeah we want to mention too that you're donating books to the Multnomah County Library and impossible life Rachel Sidaway and Sonia Watson thank you so much it's yeah. an incredible book it really is it really is all right